Oh, that's Ooh. flashy, isn't it? That is flashy. Hello, everyone. How uh, more than a week? We're right on it. <laughs> this is our pre-show amble. We've got about a minute until we go live, and got, then we'll obviously start properly. That's uh, got Darren's legs. legs. Darren's here, Chris Gorham's here, and Tom Osborne's here. How exciting oh. is it, gents? Excited? Well, always. Is this, are, we, is, are we on now properly? Or is you're this on, just you, the, you're this on the, the YouTube. Up, is it? This, this is, is like yeah, the warm-up. This is the pre-match warm-up. We've never done this okay. before. This is where we have lots of shots at you that go miles wide of the goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it. And we yeah. do lots of weird yoga poses. You, you do honestly watch that before they start yes. a game. They're shocking normally, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's all yoga now, though. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Ten seconds. We're live in ten. Oh. Hope you enjoy the show. Uh, oh. We're going off YouTube. We're, we're on very shortly. Hang around. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show. Don't know what we're doing. It's going to be this fine. kind of comedy fine, gold. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to The Pink and Show, your hour of live, dedicated Norwich City programming that has made it clear to Darren Eady, taking his shirt off and shoving it in my face will not be tolerated. <laughs> Again! Uh, we, we didn't rehearse that. Uh, we may only be a few days into the new season, uh, but it's fair to say we're not short on talking points. There's the opening day, non-defeat at Fulham, Carabao Cup fun, bird spotting, the prospect of Sunderland's visit on Sunday, and Nelson Oliveira's decision making. And that's just for starters. We are live right live. now in Norwich on Mustard TV and on our lovingly relaunched Pinkin YouTube channel. And joining us here in the studio alongside me is my right-hand man, sat to my left, Darren <laughs> Eady, uh, plus a top duo of BBC Radio Norfolk commentator and top man, Chris Gorham, plus actor, city fan and top man, Tom Osborne. Actor? Actor, yeah, apparently. Really? In, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll put that in, especially for uh, him. Have you, what have you been in? The Bisto advert? <laughs> Down, <laughs> Downton Abbey, actually. It was in, in that for a bit. Really? Downton, a Downton well, Abbey? Blink, Tom blink, Osborne. Blink and you're missing. Anyway, save that for later. <laughs> uh, as you know uh, by now, we are live, obviously. Live! They wouldn't allow that bit in. Uh, which means you can get in touch with us right here in the studio while we are on air on my phone. Simply post your thoughts and questions in the live chat on YouTube. Uh, you can send us a tweet with the handle at Pinkin or give us a bell. The number you need is 01603 63 treble 06. Look at that, wonderful. Right, let's round up some city headlines. When a draw feels like a win. Yes, not only is it 30 odd years since City fans left Fulham with a win, it's just as long since they left Craven Cottage with any sort of positive feeling. But all that changed on Saturday thanks to a few factors, one being Nelson Oliveira. I'm sure that's the last time we'll mention his name tonight. Rocking Robins. Do, 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 do. Rocking Robins. Do. Get on. Uh, it was cup action for Carroll Road's uh, introduction to the new season on Tuesday and City held on to beat League 2 Swindon despite all those set-piece issues. Here's to Wes and James Madison for the show. More of the same now, please. Mm, not so admirable, Nelson. Nelson Oliveira's celebration has rather dominated things so far, shoving his point down Daniel Farker's neck at Craven Cottage and then for a little bit longer. Uh, there's stuff going on. We didn't see Nelson on Tuesday, but we all hope everything is resolved come Sunday and the world looks a better place because City could really do with Oliveira in it. And finally, is it a duck? Is it a plane? No, it's Steeperman. Uh, there was a new signing too, confirmed on Sunday. Marco Steeperman, I think that's how we pronounce it, comes with a decent pedigree and the aim to cover City's defensive midfield and left-sided spaces, even though he also seems able to chip in with goals. More on Marco in a bit, but for now... Oh, wow, that, that is literally the most seamless piece of TV we've ever done. Uh, Darren, Chris and Tom, welcome to the show. We've heard from you all already, of course, but uh, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, not being the quietest first week, has it, Darren? No, I, I tweeted a little earlier. It feels as if the season's started in earnest, doesn't it? Um, questions, probably more than answers, I think, already into the season. One game in, and uh, we're asking whether they're one of the, probably the centre forward scored the most goals in pre-season is going to be here come the end of the transfer window. There is a chance he could leave. I think that there is a real chance of that. 
we're going to speak a lot about Nelson, but I do want to talk about the football first, if yeah. I can. So reflect on uh, Fulham, shall we, first. I mean, did, did Norwich ride their luck, Chris, or was it... Did they earn their luck, I suppose? It's a great point. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought they they got what they deserved from the game. I, when they were 1-0 down to an unfortunate own goal from their experienced captain, with seven new signings on the pitch, plus Bill Scott and Madison, who didn't play much last season, so, in effect, nine new members out of the team out of the 11. You're 1-0 down against a well-drilled, well-organised Fulham who were in the playoffs last year. I've seen Norwich City away from home in that sort of position <laughs> before completely collapse. I've seen it over the years. I've seen it as recently as last season, and I thought the potential was there for the same thing to happen. The fact that they didn't, the fact that they dug in, the fact they found a way to get a point out of the game, and the fact that Daniel Farker was constantly shuffling the pack, trying to put, put right what was wrong, players were moving on the pitch, I was really, really encouraged by, by what we saw at Fulham. And I think that, that equaliser at the end of the game from Nelson Oliveira, whatever went on after it, really did feel like lift-off and, and the start of the I, season. I think it did City. help that it was the first game of the season. I think you played Fulham a little further in. I think they'd be much more of a, a difficult proposition to, to overcome. But I think this is probably a good time for us to play them. Because whenever we play them during the season, midway through or near the end, it doesn't always go our way, does it? Yeah, <laughs> so that, that the start of the season, perhaps we can get them again. <laughs> it then. might be a good point for, Sir, for Sunday come uh, Sunderland as well. And I mean, Norwich did the job against Swindon, didn't they, as well, in the end? Yeah, it was probably a little bit more close than we would have liked yesterday, but, you know, it was uh, at least it was safely through in the end. I mean, I've, I'm slightly worried that some of those sort of defensive uh, c lacks of concentration that we saw so often last year are still there. Like, their inability to defend those sort of free kicks worry me. A lot. Yeah, I mean, we've got, I've got here the plus points and the minuses and, and the things we're trying to, we're seeing that they are trying to do and the things that aren't really coming off and, and defensively are, are the ones where you're still hoping that they can tighten up and, and show a bit more of what we would like to think Daniel Farker could bring. I think so, but I think the way he sets his teams out, he's not, he's not structurally defensive. I think he, he likes to keep possession of the ball and he likes to score goals. So not too dissimilar from Alex Neal, but he will shuffle the pack, and that's what I like about him. The fact he will change players, Madison's been in, um, Jamal Lewis has been given a new contract. I think all these things are, are good signs for the future mm. of Norwich, but whether some of those lads can be ready for a hard, long season in the Championship is another question. We don't. It, it, for me, there is still more questions than answers for this season. With that many players coming into the squad, I don't think we'll really know until kind of 10 games in as to where we feel settled or whether there's going to be a, a long season. Yeah, I think the big encouragement for me is that they've been 1-0 down after 25 minutes, funnily enough, in both games yeah. um, so <laughs> yeah. far. And how many times did Norwich come from behind to get anything last season? Mm -hmm. Not very often at all. Yet the reaction to going 1-0 down in both games has been really impressive. They've, it, it hasn't put them off their stride. They've carried on doing what, the, what they're supposed to have been doing. They've got back into both games. And, you know, w within 20 minutes of going a, a goal down against Swindon, they, they were 3-1 up last night. Did so. you read into that, though? Because I look back to Alex Neal's first season, you know, couldn't lose away from home. Yeah. yeah. Looks last season, couldn't win away from home. So it, all of a sudden, you know, you, you can read into things a little bit too much, especially this early on in the season. Absolutely. Game. I agree that they're not conceding that second goal, which I think is a, is a really good thing. Uh, apologies for the YouTube feed if it's a little bit pixelated. Hopefully that's not going to carry on for a second week on the trot. Uh, we've had two games already, as we've said. Let's hear some of the post-match reaction. Basically, my chat with the evergreen, Wes Hulan. Wes, primary job in a cup game is to win and get through, and regardless of everything else, that's what you achieved. Yeah, we did. You know, we set out uh, our store tonight and uh, we got the win that uh, I thought we deserved. We played really well, um, passed the ball, made a lot of uh, chances, and uh, you know, we, we obviously scored three goals, but uh, we could have scored more. Defensively, it's obviously going to be the big question mark from tonight. H how frustrating is that? Because I'm sure there's been a lot of work going in from Daniel and, and you guys to look more secure than you did last season. Yeah, of course. You know, we want to work on that side of it. You know, defensively uh, instead of like obviously scoring goals a lot. Um, you know, we'll be disappointed with uh, conceding the two free kicks. Uh, obviously, we'll probably look at it tomorrow and see see how it goes. How are you finding it working under the new manager now? It's obviously we spoke to you at Cove, but it's been a, a few weeks on from then. I know you've been injured, but yeah. well, what's it been like? Yeah, it's been brilliant. You know, every day is just uh, enjoyable going to the training, uh, a lot of sessions, a lot of like possession, and uh, all the boys are enjoying it. And, and for someone, you know, in your later years yeah. of your career, I mean, it is a lot different. It is a, a, a bigger workload. Are you learning a lot? How, how different is it to everything you've experienced before? Yeah, it's completely different. You know, obviously this morning we were training before the game, you know, haven't done that, you know, in my uh, career. So uh, it was interesting to do. And uh, yeah, f we found it quite, uh, uh, you know, looser and uh, went back to Park Farm. So it's, it's definitely a different uh, regime and a different structure. And uh, I think all the boys are enjoying it. Um, how frustrating was it during pre-season having 
what was a pretty lengthy injury, I suppose, wasn't it? You missed quite a lot of football. Yeah, I missed, uh, I think it was two weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, you know, when I had three weeks off in the summer. I think I maybe came back too, a bit too early and, uh, you know, it was felt my toy. But, uh, you know, last two or three weeks, uh, getting myself back fit and, um, you know, enjoy, enjoying it. And, and the mood around the camp, I mean, it was a really good point and a really good impact from you on Saturday and then th- this tonight what, what's the mood around the camp going into Sunday's game yeah we're obviously looking forward to it uh, we've got Sunderland at home it'll be a tough game uh, we watched them on Friday night and uh, they look very good um, you know but we'll take positives from Saturday against Fulham uh, sticking in and uh, staying strong and you know the last two minutes uh, getting the equaliser and then tonight you know the way we played the uh, football especially in the se- uh, first half um, we can create a lot of problems so uh, we'll look forward to uh, Sunday thanks, thanks so much thanks for no problem cheers he looks very really different. Thin. He does, Darren. You're right, he does look very different. Uh, we're going to take a quick moment now for a sincere apology. I'm sorry. So sorry. That, was, that wasn't quite what I asked for. Anyway, uh, I, I would like to take this moment to offer my sincerest apologies for a moment, of gra- uh, a moment of grave error I made while covering last night's Carabao Cup win over Swindon for Pinkin.com. In the second half of the game, a glorious pair of wings descended into Carroll Road, completed a lap after lap of honour, and drew the best atmosphere heard so far this season. It even brought a Mexican wave. But in my haste, I called said bird a duck, when, uh, despite its apparent similarities to a female mallard, it was in fact a goose, a fine goose too. Uh, Just don't ask me what sort. Direct those questions to Rob Butler. He had the time to look into it. Anyway, I I ask for your sincerest forgiveness, and I promise you all I will not make such frivolous and foul identification mistakes in future. OK, City made a signing on Sunday. Here's a bit about him. So we actually had Superman and Tom Tribal come into the mm. building as well. A couple more midfielders, Tom. Are they the sort of players you want to see coming in? Um, I would quite like to see another centre-back, if I'm honest. Um, I mean, I know we've, it's good that he's sort of shoring up the, the midfield ranks. I mean, I know it seems that he's after a defensive midfielder, um, only having Alex Tessie beforehand. But uh, I, mean, I don't really know enough about these two, I suppose. That's the thing, when you're getting all these sort of guys coming over from the lower leagues in on the continent. Your, my knowledge of that is uh, admittedly a lot poorer than it would be if it were uh, sort of League One or Two. I, yeah. well, I, think, I think that's the point. It is, uh, to the average City fan, which, which all of us are, we kind of don't know most of these players. Mm. You know, we don't know much of their history. We can read up a little bit about them, but actually we don't know much. So it really is a sort of dip into the unknown yeah. until we see them out in the park. It's because mm. it's fun covering it, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, well, it should, I think it's not just Norwich. I think as English football fans, we're quite insular, aren't we? You know, we hadn't even heard of Alex Neal, who went really, when he came, became <laughs> yeah, Norwich right. manager, and he only came from Scotland. So what Alex, chance... Al- it's Alec. Alec Neal, sorry. That's how I get stuck into So what, what chance have we got with people who've been playing in, you know, Bundesliga 2? But... Um, <laughs> Clearly, that route has worked for the Huddersfield before. We, we, we've got people in, at the club now who know that German market very, very well, and, and, and they're better placed to, to, to judge than we are. I, I dare say it'll be like, like most things in football. Some of them will work, and some of them will take to the English game. Um, others won't. I've, have you seen I've got my Norwich Goose merchandise? Oh, yeah. oh it's beautiful. Oh, nice. well, you got that made that was in, nice. yeah, in, in tribute yeah. to you. Fantastic. That that's that's the difference between a duck and a it's goose. It's now in his freezer ready for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, goose. don't say what that. A, what a goose. Jeremy Goose, by the way, was the best pun of the of And Goose Gun. And Goose Gun. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's hear from uh, Mr. <laughs> Steeperman, shall we? I'm very happy. Um, if I saw uh, the city here, it's very nice and uh, it's a traditional club in uh, England and so uh, I don't need a long time to think about it to make this way. I was very interested in, in English clubs and so I know Norwich City a long time and um, so now it's good for me, to, I think, to play here. We uh, played together in Greuther Fürth. Um, so I know Mario Wanchic and um, yeah, we speak together about the club and so uh, it was very good. I think it uh, will help me and um, it make a lot of things easier for me. And um, yeah, they tell me uh, 
so much about the club. We'll see what Marco and Tom have to offer then, shall we? Uh, it is early days, but let's have a quick look at the opening day championship picture, shall we? Sunderland were held at home to Derby on opening night, while Bristol City were the big winners as they put Barnsley to the sword. Ipswich surprised Harry Redknapp, while Borough's big build-up ended in defeat at Molyneux and a John Reddy clean sheet. Uh, the Blades made a winning return, while Alec Neal's p and &E reign also started with a win. Villa were held, and the only away wins went to Cardiff and Leeds at Burton and Bolton, respectively. So City start the season in the bottom half of the table. Long mm. gone are the days of Teletext and CFAX only publishing tables after the first three games. And of course, uh, that is bad news for Reading, Barnsley and Sheffield Wednesday. All three relegated sides are in the bottom half. There you go. Uh, and at the top, it's Bristol City who take first honours. Ipswich are primed for promotion as they sit in the top six. All right. Although Alec Neal is breathing down their necks and Sheffield United are the only promoted side sat in the top half. Fancy trying to read stuff into the first weekend of the season, gents. But go on, what did you read into the first half? It was in the top six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. Stranger Brilliant. things have happened. Oh, that ain't going to happen, is it? Let's be honest. Uh, it's, it's nice to them have a little bit of glory above Norwich for uh, one game of the season, but that'll all change around pretty quickly, I'm sure. Fair enough. Anything catch your eye, gents? Um, I think Cardiff, I think. Well, I was, was going to go with Bristol City. I mean, uh, they've, start, they've made a, quite a, uh, an expensive sign. They've broken their transfer record for um, a guy who I just name I don't know, <laughs> um, who start, hit the ground running by the looks of things. I think he scored a few last night as well and they stuffed Plymouth, I think, 5-0. Um, and they, I remember they started well last year and then fell apart. But i would be interested to see what happens there because I think um, Lee Johnson was a, very close to getting the sack mm. around the time our own dear Alex... He, he was the only one with a worse record than Alex Neal for a lot yeah. of last season in terms of, of runs. Um, Burrow got the big build-up, Chris, and then they would go and lose at Wolves. How, who are, yeah, how often does that happen to you know, teams that are mm. just relegated from, 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 the, from the Premier League? But surely over the years with Norwich City, we've learned you, you can't ever read anything into the opening day of the season. <laughs> we, we say it all about pre-season, don't read too much into this, mm. and then... You know, so much will change. The, I mean, how many of those 24 managers or head coaches mm. will still be on place come the but end of the season? Wa you just Warnock, don't know. Warnock doesn't often get it wrong, does he? No. A little no. bit of time at a football club, he does tend to shore things up. Yeah. So I think they'll, they'll be They are dark horses for top six. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure about top yeah, they, I think they'll be certainly a lot better than they were last season. Yeah, we, we, we will see. And I, I could ask you where you think Norwich will finish after one game. Top That's six. Fun. Top, top six. six, yeah, no doubt. No doubt, Chris. No doubt. That's no confident. Doubt. I think they'll be there or thereabouts. I said at the start of the season, I said they'll finish somewhere between fifth and eighth. I think it all depends just how quickly all this settles. Tom? I would agree with Chris. That'll do for me. Uh, right, that's it for part one. Uh, when we return, it's time to tell us what you think. Get your calls, comments and questions in. We're heading for a break on Mustard. And if you're watching on YouTube, you're about to get some bonus studio time. I'm going to do a Mooney. People. <laughs> no. Uh, here's to some YouTube gold, but not that. And we'll be reunited in three. Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Sorry about the state of the YouTube feed, by the way. Yeah, it's not good. That's annoying. It's not our fault, either. We've got our best men on the job, says producer Jake. Yes. Who's that, Rudd? <laughs> yes. Te technical genius that is Ian Rudd. <laughs> so the thing is, Michael, you look pixelated from here. Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's room. not, I'm not, the tr I'm not the problem. Oh, well, obviously. No. Here, here is Ian, look, Ian. He's the best man, he's the best man. I don't, don't know why man. it's not working, all right? I don't know. Ian said it. That's brilliant. You don't know why it's not working. I don't know. That's brilliant. don't know. That's brilliant, that's really fun. Thanks for coming. Never trust a man, never trust a man in a Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles t-shirt. That's a fish. Who's got a Ghostbusters tattoo? Ghostbusters tattoo. He'll probably unplug us all in a bit. He's just going, pop. Anyway, we're all on here, aren't we? Um, what should we talk about? Anything we want to talk about in the meantime? Well, just, it did amuse me when you mentioned Rudd. Think about poor old Declan Rudd, who I just noticed yesterday was not even on the subs bench. Is he still injured? Is he? Still well, he was on the bench on Saturday. Was he? But then we did not oh, feature yeah. at all yesterday as they got knocked out. What do we the, think of Preston? Do we think he's going to pull off a bit of a coup there? Or no, Alex I'd be very surprised if he does. Yeah, I don't think he's... Uh, I'm not sure he's got a lot to work with, having no. seen him towards the end of last season and, and the way Norwich were head and shoulders above them. So I, I think it's a it's, it's a big job for him. But yeah. it, so that's the sort of thing he specialised in before. He's certainly he? not walked into a club like no, no, Norwich, has no, he? No, he hasn't. But then you know, he he made his real success at Hamilton, yeah. going in with the underdogs and, and doing perhaps yeah, the there, expectations so. for him there are probably yeah. different as they were here. Yeah. They've lost they McGeady as well. Stanley, yeah, who are they? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they lost it in typical Alex Neal fashion because they 
equalised in the 91st minute and then lost it in the 93rd minute. Mm. Oh, wow. So They've lost uh, McGeady, haven't they? He's got a Sunderland, yeah. hasn't he? Good yeah. player. There we go. Hey, you had Mr Webber on the scrimmage. We did. Was it yeah, last week? It was, like, oh, it nearly like a week ago. ago. Yeah, we did, well, we didn't even know what was going to happen with Nelson Oliveira at that point. No, no, but, no. Yeah, no. it was really good, and I think uh, it's gone down very well with supporters. I think th the fact that the club were prepared to put one of their main men in a radio mm. studio for an hour mm. by himself, there was no one else from the club there over his shoulder, just in case people wondered whether that's the <laughs> way it worked. He was there by himself, happy to do it, and I think that bodes well. I think that's what supporters want to see from a club. They a little don't expect, bit of honesty. Yeah, they don't it? expect... Whether it's right or wrong. Exactly. They don't expect people to get things right all the time. They just want to know that there is a plan and they want to be kept in the loop. And I yeah. think that's something that a lot of football clubs aren't very good at and Norwich City mm. haven't been very good at in recent years. But yeah. maybe they realise that. We'll see. Where we see. We'll see how it goes on. Right, we're, we're going back, are we? We're going back. Welcome back to part two of the Pink and Show, and it's time to hand things over to you in Talk is Cheap, where throughout the season your calls, questions, comments and posts will lead the Norwich City agenda. So to get in touch with us here in the studio or to this very phone, and we've got your messages streaming through as I speak, simply post your comments or questions in the live chat feed, that they are, <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, you can send a tweet with the handle at Pinkin or give us a call on 01603 63006. I think we've already had a couple of those. All right, we're going to start off. The big talking point almost certainly is Nelson Oliveira. Let's hear some of what Paddy David had to say on Tuesday night, I believe, on the Nelson situation. No, I think it was a bit over the top. I've seen it back on the TV now as well. I mean, uh, fair enough, you know, he's, he's unhappy that he's not starting um, and he's expressed that. But it was almost like after far, I mean, you see the pictures, Farker's basically tried to embrace him with a kiss and he's like shrugged him off and he still wants to go at it. He's still throwing his shirt in the face of his manager slash head coach. Um, don't like to see that at all. I can understand his frustration. Well, if you were in his shoes, of course you want to play, but I think it might have just uh, been a bit too far for my liking. But, uh, you know, there's no doubt in the man's ability. He's a fantastic footballer. But there's a reason he's not playing at the top end of the Premier League, and maybe that's something to do with his temperament. And we saw a snapshot of that in the goal celebration. Um, and that's really for Farkin out. He's going to have to manage, manage him as he manages all his players to get the best out of him but um, certainly it worked in the sense that when he came on he was an angry man and you could see that in his 20 minute cameo and uh, no doubt in the man's ability fine finish wonderful pass from Wes Hulan yes. um, but the chest control the composure which would sadly lack him from one or two of his teammates uh, before he, he entered the fray so yeah okay yeah he's frustrated we understand it but I think I think probably Monday, if he was to see that again and he's calmed down a bit, he'd think he'd, he overstepped the mark a little bit. But the manager, who's the only one who really matters, probably he uh, he brushed it off. Spoke to him after the game, post match, and he basically drew a parallel with his own career. I think he was a striker in his playing days and said uh, there were times when he was frustrated and angry with his coach. He said he, there was one occasion he'd thrown his shirt, not just taking it off, but throwing it down at his coach's feet. So you know, it's it's kind of the boots on the other foot for him. So I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll place too much context by that but if you're asking me do, would I like to see that no I don't I don't like to see that at all uh, the astute of you may have noticed that was indeed Saturday afternoon but uh, and let's have a look at some of the tweets shall we that have filtered through as the uh, sort of news has uh, has evolved we've got them Lucas Ken Nelson Oliveira won't be a Norwich player by the end of the transfer window judging by that celebration Dan O'Hagan friend of the show and friend of the scrimmage too uh, catching up on Oliveira's uh, celebration not the place for it, even accounting for heat of the moment. Still Norwich's best striker, of course, which is true. Uh, Jake Humphrey, Norwich fancy, madly in love with Nelson. Imagine if he'd scored more than 34 league goals in the last seven seasons. Ouch. Uh, Michael Nairn, uh, the Oliveira versus Jerome date amongst fans is silly. We need both to play their part every week in a one-up system. And they're both different players, of course. Nick B. Uh, well, I, for one, chuffing love. Thank goodness he used that word. Nelson Oliveira, long may he continue to show passion. And I think a lot of fans agreed with that. Tom Brown, hoping Oliveira is gone by lunchtime tomorrow after his little stunt yesterday. The sooner he's out of the club, the better. 
So, definite consensus there between the Norwich City fans. Gents, you'll go. <laughs> I, I, um, well, I come in from two points of view. I've been frustrated before when playing and, and not getting picked um, by Peter Taylor, who was manager of Leicester at the time. And there is a limit, and you can express yourself. And, and, uh, and I scored at Middlesbrough when I wasn't picked. I come on and scored against Middlesbrough. And did it. I, turned, I just turned and pointed at the back, and that was it. That was enough. Even Little Wink will just go and run past them. Too far. It's too far. And there was almost no coming back from that because I think there's, that was born out of what's happened in pre season. I think there's been lots going on behind the scenes. You know, whether you hear things, well, Vera's not working hard enough in training. I don't know. Why didn't he get picked for the first game of the season? So if he went straight into change rooms afterwards and apologised, I think it'll all be forgotten. If he didn't, the manager would have certainly had him in and said, that's bang out of order. I think if he's gone that and said that to Oliveira, I'm pretty certain Oliveira would have said, I don't care. <laughs> I'll do it all I want to do. He seems that type of bloke. So th there's going to be more to this story, I think. I can't, I can't see it just fizzling out and dying away. Well, there's that. And there's also the stuff we don't know that's happened, as Darren has yeah. said. We don't know what's happened. You I, know. I think that's key. I think we, all we've seen is that the celebration. We, don't, we haven't seen what went on afterwards in, in the dressing room how he may have reacted or, or not reacted to, to what's been said and, and what's happened since. So it's impossible to make a, a sound judgment on what Norwich City should do or what Nelson Oliveira should do because we don't know what's gone on behind the scenes. All we do know is that he was nowhere to be seen last night and nobody was really prepared to talk about whether he's going to be anywhere to be seen uh, on Sunday. But the passion argument I get, um, Norwich fans and fans of all football clubs love to see passion, but I think we had Cedric Onsalan with us on the radio last night and, and he made a very wise point. He says... It all depends whether the passion is for the team or yeah, the passion absolutely. is for himself. Absolutely. And that's, th that can be damaging. I, I think it, it, well, he was it pushing really off his other players as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it went it. on. I think the thing oh, that got me, on. it went on and on, yeah, which yeah, I only yeah. realised sort of, I didn't really mind it when I initially no. heard of it and saw it, but it was like, oh, now it's yeah, just gone we got, on. A got bit. led away and then sort of came back for, for sort of some afters, really, didn't mm. he? And I, I liked what Daniel Farker said the other day that um, it's, it's all very well to be in the name on the, the shirt, but make sure it's the name on the front, which is the club, not the name on the back. Um, I sort of, I think that's very uh, astute thing to say and uh, he's absolutely right I mean I, as I said I get that he's probably he might have been frustrated but that was a complete over the top and especially yeah. first game of the season it's not like well, it's sort of like yeah. been on he's been going on for months and hasn't had a sniff and then comes on and um, it, it, frustration that way this is the first game so where's the good players as well well I, th it? I think so his timing's good. awful because one thing Stuart Webber has said whenever we've spoken to him is he wants to create a an atmosphere where there's a bit of humility and players want mm. to work hard. To do that on the first day of the season when the club is trying hard to get that message across. You know, this is the bloke yeah. who was sent off at Rotherham last yeah. year after, <laughs> after the, 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 the red mists came down. So, yeah, yeah, we remember that one too. Uh, we've got Jack Power on the phone. Jack, thanks for ringing in and taking the time. Uh, what's your view on, on the Nelson Oliveira situation? Um, I, I was at the game on Saturday and um, obviously loved it when he did score the goal. Um, I quite liked it, if I'm honest. It was nice to see a player that wants to play for the club. I know he probably went a bit over the top, um, obviously running up to the manager with the shirt, etc. But it's nice to see that he obviously wants to play um, and obviously believes that he should be playing as well. And it's also nice to have a bit of a character as well. It's a bit, a bit like the likes of Cantona and Ibrahimovic and even Ronaldo to a degree, a bit of arrogance. And he clearly feels good enough and he, and he wants to play for the club. And I suppose you, like, like a lot of Norwich fans, will want uh, Daniel Farker in this situation to, to manage it so that no one gets sold, no one gets dished off, and that Norwich can still get the better at, best out of him while, while managing the situation, which may sound a bit fanciful, but that's what, that's what the, most Norwich fans would want? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm sure he'll play on Sunday, and I'm sure it'll all be resolved. He's probably been suspended, you know, had a week's uh, wages. Um, taken away from him. He's probably going to play as well yesterday or at least come off the bench. He's been told that he's probably to stay away last night and he'll probably play on Sunday and I'm sure it'll all be forgotten about. And um, hopefully he'll react by scoring a goal on Sunday. A goal on Sunday, run over and give Daniel Farker a big <laughs> hug. Isn't that the truth? Uh, Brett Harvey on the YouTube, he says, personally, I think we need to stop talking about Nelson Oliveira. <laughs> Not yet, I'm afraid, Brett. Uh, Daniel Farker knows what he's doing. He shouldn't have just dropped him. I can see him starting on Sunday, so let's support our team. Which, I, you know, well, obviously is where we're all coming yeah, from. Daniel Farker's going to say the right things. Of course he is. Yeah. That's his position to do that. But uh, I guarantee with a new manager coming into a new club, with the players that are already there, he has to put down a marker. He can't let a player like that get away with that. He has to set a standard. You know, it, it, it has to be dealt with. 
Yeah. And I'm sure he has dealt with it. Um, but what the outcome will be, I'm, I'm not quite sure. And, the other and that'd be more down to Oliveira, I think, than, than yeah, yeah. yeah, and I, I think the other thing is, people are uh, sort of saying that by coming on and scoring a goal against Fulham, um, Oliveira proved Daniel Farker wrong. Actually, he proved him right. Yeah. Because mm. he, he had him on the bench, and, and that was the plan. Have Cameron Jerome mm. on there, work hard. Maybe when the Fulham defence are tiring, put on this striker who can create something out of nothing, who's got something different. And actually, the way Daniel Farker used Oliveira at Craven Cottage worked perfectly. So mm. he was he was proven right as well as wrong. Exactly. Uh, Jack, thank you so much for your call. M much appreciated. And, I mean, the, the argument has distilled, Tom, into Nelson or uh, Cam, hasn't it? Constantly. And it, it's far from that straightforward. And, and actually, Actually, Cameron Jerome, it's interesting how he feels about this with the, you know, his other striker going on about how he should definitely be starting. And well, I was wondering that as well. I, mean, I, I did stop to think, how would Cameron Jerome be feeling in all this? He had you know. a big smile on his face when Nelson scored, as he said. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, I noticed that. I just wondered, like, all that fuss, because you obviously, in a way, it's almost like him, Oliveira, saying, well, I'm better than you, so therefore I should be starting. And that's, as Chris alluded to, that's not the sort of atmosphere you want in that team, especially, you said, in fact, the Stuart Webber is coming and they've made that sort of marked uh, attempt to have a, uh, a united team. So, um, I think I think Cameron Drum's more of a wry smile at the fact that Oliver is <laughs> digging himself a big hole. And he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Which you, I, I get the impression that a few of his teammates will be a bit like, oh, yeah. all right, mm. Nelson. But they'll obviously know what's been going on uh, better yeah, than all we will, too. Uh, I think we've got our next caller on, on the line, which is Tony. Um, I would just like to say about the, um, the uh, that was really bad about us conceding with two set pieces. I thought they were really poor, um, especially the uh, uh, the first one, first one uh, in the first half. I thought um, I thought that was really bad. Um, but apart from that, I thought we played really well uh, with uh, Parson, especially Harrison Reed again. Um, how he's passing the ball, how he's keeping the ball. I can't believe how he keeps it uh, quite close to his feet. Um, he's a bit like Wes, to be honest. Um, I think he's going to help us he, uh, if he keeps fit. I think I think he'll keep. I think he'll get us promoted next season if he keeps fit. Fingers crossed. And there's no doubt Harrison Reed has definitely been impressive. Just in terms of the of the set pieces, Tony, what what who would you put blame on? For, for watching them, because you know, there's a defence, there's possibly Angus, or were they just, you know, decent balls into the box? Um, it's just uh, decent balls into the box, but um, it seems like to me they were just stand still. They didn't know where the ball was going to come, if that makes sense. They, the ball just came into the box and they just seemed to stand there. Like, because um, I was in the snake pit, you see, I was right uh, with the, uh, se I think, yeah, the second half. Um, where the ball just came in, they just like stood there, and the only one who actually tried to jump was Harrison Reed. So, um, but no, no one else wanted to block the ball. So, Harrison was probably one of the ones who needed to jump. It's fair to say. Sometimes you just have to admire the delivery into the box, but I don't think that was the case. Well, no, I, I was, yeah, I was sort of a little bit tongue in cheek yes. because Norwich is defending. You looked at it. I mean, what was it? Have you seen, got a chance to see the goals again? Just, what did I, you think, I think Tony's right. It was static. A lot of players standing on their heels, not attacking the ball when it's coming in. Perhaps they felt they were comfortable in the game and playing a lower league team, they weren't going to be troubled too much. It was like they were trying to keep a high line, mm. um, but then they had to drop back and they were almost sort of back on their heels by the time the ball was coming in, in a way. Yeah, and the, the one thing that I, when we were looking into Swindon before the game, the, the one thing that I was told by our, our colleagues who covered them for the BBC in, in Wiltshire was, watch Chris Hussey on set pieces, he's got a great delivery. So if we knew about it, it shouldn't have come as a surprise to Norwich City. I don't think it did. I think they'd been supposedly thinking about it and planning for it, but that they weren't able to, to, to deal with those threats. And it's, it's, it's good to get these things out there this early in the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. and in a cup game, to be to, honest. There's, there's, there's time to iron these things out, but it, it's clear. I mean, it, we can't expect Norwich to be the finished article yet, no. given all the new signings, but it, it's clear that they are very much a work in progress. But purely on a tactical thing, you, you're dead right. If you're playing a high line and you're running backwards, it's far harder to jump as you're running backwards than it is to attacking the ball running forward. So it was going to pose a bit of a problem if a decent ball does get delivered into the Honestly, ball. they'd have been better lining up on the goal line and running out as the ball came in. They'd <laughs> had a bit of a momentum. Uh, t Tony, just finally, get your view on, on the Nelson Oliveira situation. How, how do you see it now? Um, I, 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 to be honest, I think we just should start him on Sunday, just give it a new fresh, um, to see how he, how he reacts after he scores again, right when he starts. If he starts and he scores and then runs over to fuck what you said, um, give him a good hug, then just forget about it. Great stuff, Tony. Thank you so much for your call. Really appreciate that. Uh, someone uh, also got picked up, and I think it's on here, isn't it? Um, stunning array of... I hope that's clean. Uh, stunning array of... Uh, Murphy was marking their centre-back. I think there was an issue with people who were picking up various people in the set pieces too. I think 
Josh was picking up uh, Lancaster for the Yeah, I mean, the, these are all weekend. things that should be done before the game. So you'd know clearly who you're picking up. Unless they've made two or three substitutions, then things can get mixed up a little bit. But then the substitution that's coming on should be instructed who they're picking up from set pieces. So there shouldn't be any confusion. Um, where did it go wrong? Did that, somebody not get told who they are picking up? Uh, that was endemic of last season, though, I felt, as well. It was also It's almost like just go back and defend it? rather than having yeah, any instructions. Like to someone, defend someone defend it, and often it would be the case that no one would, and they'd have conceded a goal. But I can't believe Daniel Farr could leave that to chance, can you? No, I wouldn't no. have thought so. No. And they'll clearly work on it you know, now until whenever they get the chance to look at it. Should we be that worried about it? That it has carried um, on from last year? Well, it's, it's a completely different defence, isn't it, from last year, pretty much. Different goalkeeper. And a different, co different coaches. Board, different coach. so it's <laughs> yeah. like, I think, that, yes, the, we all sat through last season, so we, we feel the same as we did last season. But, you know, if they're still doing this, if this keeps happening, then it will become a problem. But it's another test of the, the coaching staff. There's an obvious issue there, because it happened twice in the same game. Have they got the tools to put it right? The challenge is there now, isn't it? And that's what they're paid for. That's what they're on the training ground for every day. It's never it? a problem as long as you score more than they do. Well, well, exactly. As they did last night. Well, likewise, we're going behind, I suppose, and, and, until you can't do it. Uh, right, we've got uh, Andy Lorne on the phone, off of uh, Along Come Norwich, I believe. Andy, thanks so much for ringing in. Now, uh, I want to, uh, you to talk about Sunday, because I get the impression that there's a bit of a, uh, a plan ahead of the game on Sunday to help with the atmosphere, and it doesn't involve a goose uh, flying around Carra Road. No, that's right. Um, so Barclay and Norwich are trying to get people to join up before the game outside Weatherspoons at half twelve on Sunday. And basically just all get together, have a good sing song, have a laugh, and then all walk down to the ground together. Which sounds lovely. Does that not happen anyway? Well, this is it. I mean, what, what, why, why this, Andy? Why, why has this come up? Well, I think just to try and help improve the atmosphere at Cow Road. So get like-minded people who want to sing and want to chant together and then try and spark the atmosphere long before the game starts and then keep it going into the game. Darren thinks the booze will help. Yes. Uh, but then he <laughs> probably would. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, this is interesting. I mean, have you got any other things planned as well? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw you in the bowels of Carrow Road on, uh, on Tuesday night with a massive banner. Yeah, there's one or two things uh, up our sleeves, but you'll have to wait for Sunday to see what they are. <laughs> oh, well, we get you on the phone and then you don't tell us. Massive banner. Clappers. You said and banner. clappers. Glad you said banner. I did say banner, indeed. Um, <laughs> Andy, how excited are you by all this? Because um, it's, it's been something of a German takeover to a degree, and obviously it's exciting the way Norwich City are going to be going about this. Is it um, tickling your biscuit? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a real excitement among the fans again at the moment, and that can only be a positive thing. And if that translates into a sort of feel-good factor coming from the stands, I think that can only be a good thing too. Uh, spot on. Are we, we going to get you out in, in here on the show soon, I hope? Uh, yeah, if you don't keep bumping me for Chris Gorham. <laughs> and on that note, uh, then what have you made of the first two? What have you made of the first two games uh, so far, Andy? I think really, really positive, actually. Even last night, yeah, we conceded two silly goals, but that's now three games in a row where we've gone behind and fought back and not lost which wouldn't have happened under Alex Neal. And even last night when, we, when Swindon got back to 3-2, it would have been quite easy to sort of fold and let Swindon back into the game. But we didn't. We kept our composure and we saw the game out. Just one more. In, in terms of the atmosphere on Sunday, it's going to be a full house pretty much for the first time this season. We're going to have the new era. We're going to have playing it around at the back, all this sort of stuff. What are you hoping for from your Carroll Road colleagues? I think... Uh, collectivity, positivity, and a bit of patience. I all agree with that. Andy, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Our producer Jake apologises for bumping off the show this week, but it's all fine. Look, he rang in. It doesn't matter. Uh, atmosphere is going to be a big thing, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, and it does worry me because football fans aren't really known for their patience. Um, and I, I mean, I, I do hope that we, obviously, after one game, hopefully people won't lose their heads and go berserk because this is as. Chris and Darren both said it, a work in progress. It's not, you know, the finished article by any means. Um, so I just hope that they are positive as much as, you know, and can sort of lift the players should they find themselves in a spot of bother, which they shouldn't do with Lewis Gravel and James Vaughan up front for some reason. So <laughs> we'll get stuck into that. It's amazing how quickly that we turned, turned from being, like the season before, promotion favourites to now rebuilding, structuring yeah. again. It's just a, a kind of fall from grace. I think they're still fifth favourites. Yeah. yeah, it's a curious balance this season because yeah. the goal is probably still to get promoted somehow. We're just mm. none of us mm. are sure how they're going to manage it. Uh, Roger Mallard's been on the uh, YouTube commenting, I'm not condoning his behaviour, but he should be the first one on the score sheet 
uh, to score the goals. This is obviously Nelson Oliveira. Let Cam Jam come on and do what he does best, hold up the ball for the last 15 minutes if we're winning. A little bit harsh. Uh, we've got Peter on the phone. Peter, thanks for, for calling in. Uh, it's time for you to have your say on, on Nelson Oliveira, I guess. Yeah, hello. Uh, we've got Peter on the phone. Peter. Hello, Peter. Uh, good evening. Um, Nelson Oliveira. Nelson Oliveira. Um, the passion... The passion... Uh, you can you hear me? Uh, yes, Peter, we can hear you. I think we've got about two minutes. The, the passion on the... The passion on Oliveira, score on the goal. Can you hear me? Yeah, Peter, we can hear you. Nelson Oliveira's passion. Nelson Oliveira's passion. Um, right. The, 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 the thing is, he scored that goal two minutes, two minutes to the uh, end, end of the game. He scored that goal and he ran, ran over to the manager to... All right, to, to, to explain to, to the manager that he scored the goal, his passion for the goal. Now, if he is going to suspend him and suspend him for the Sunderland game as well as last night, is he, is he going to uh, is he going to um, a, Transfer him to another club by the end of the season, okay? Are we? Uh, I think we were running out of time. I, I've, clearly, Peter's worried that if Nelson Oliveira yes. goes, they're screwed, which yeah. is a fair point. And I think the first, first, first thing someone asked me, "Bless Peter, thank you so much for your call." First thing uh, uh, someone said to me on Twitter was, uh, "If would Nelson have been suspended if Norwich were playing Sunderland on Tuesday night?" I mean, that's a big question, isn't it? I don't, again, I think we're just... If he was suspended, or at least, you know, not, not involved. We've with all this again, because we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I think we'll find out, probably the answers will be on Sunday, if he starts or not, if it's all forgotten about. Until that point, I think if he doesn't start, Fark's making a statement by not starting him, and, and nothing's going to change, because he still thinks he should start mm. again. So, I think we'll be as we were, if, if he starts on Sunday. If he doesn't start on Sunday, if he's on the bench. But if he does start, I think he's almost bow down to him a little bit and I don't think that will happen. But that's almost the thing, is it? We'd expect Cam to probably start on Sunday because he yeah. started on Saturday and he did yeah. well enough. Mm. Yeah, I, I, we were all saying they've done well and got decent results out of the, the two games they've had. So it, it doesn't feel like a, a time to, to go making wholesale changes. I think it's clearly a, a difficult one that's got to be handled. We don't know everything that's gone on. All I would say is if they do sell him, if they decide that's the right thing to do and we don't know whether that's going to happen or not, we're getting towards the end of August and they've got they will have to find a replacement as well. <laughs> they will. So it's, I'm it's hopeful he's staying. That's my view. I'm hopeful he's staying. As always, if you want to have your say in any future shows, uh, simply get in touch via the pinkin.com message board or send an email to our new email address, the pinkin at archin.co.uk. Thank you so much for all your calls. Uh, it is break time, you know the drill. If you're watching on mustard, stick the kettle on. And if you're watching on YouTube, we'll see you again in seconds. Goodbye. We're still here. I'm so sorry we ran out of time for Peter. Passion. We, he was getting there. It was, just, we, we, it was the last call, which means we only had like two minutes or whichever. And, mm. But yeah. passion. He used all them up. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. It's good of him to ring in. No, it is. Are we done with Nelson now? Can we draw a line under that? I think Are so. you getting to the point where we're all signing? Let's see what happens Sunday. Then we'll have another go at it. I think we've, yeah, we've said all we can <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on Nelson. Several times. What else should we talk about? We did have lots of comments on here. Madison, I think, last night was, yeah, was a really huge for us. Game, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, a really, really good game in Wes together. But it seems to me as if Fark at the moment, I know he likes to ch chop and change his teams during games, but I'm still not clear if he knows what his starting 11 is. Mm. His, his the ultimate team, if he had everybody fit. Obviously, we've still got Pritchard and close to come back, but... Yeah. Maybe he's not bothered about that. Maybe he's a bit more of a manager that will have a squad of 16, 17 and rotate and manage the team. Well, it was interesting manage that the team. Stuart Webber said that, didn't he? That you'd much rather have a team of players that um, all think they are in, a in with a chance mm. of playing than having mm. what was 22 outfield players. Some of them think, well, I'm never going to get near them. Which was a major Sorry, issue. But yeah, a major you issue. Can't, you can't be major familiarity. You can't be familiarity mm. as a player.
Uh, Tom is anti-chav wants attention, says, uh, says... Talk about sexy Houlihan, says Tom is anti-chav. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was a question about me. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> it does look like cage fighter. Now with his skinhead and his beard. Where's Houlihan? Yeah. That, has that ever been said before? Well, where's where's, where's Houlihan the cage, cage fighter? fighter? No, but yeah. Yeah. The, the, the sorcerer in The Apprentice last night was... Uh, you couldn't help but thinking, hello, there's an understanding mm. there. That, that looks promising, doesn't and, it? And the way they play, yeah. that Farka hasn't set up, you can see the two of them playing in a system yeah. that will work. It looks promising. I think we've, we've had Madison wrong a little bit over the last year or so because we've all assumed he was going to be one of these number 10 types that plays behind the striker. But having seen him during pre-season, there, there's so much more to him than yeah, that. He, he gets involved agree. in the game a lot more than somebody like a Pritchard or always Houlihan who would naturally play in that position. He I likes to come deeper. There's a lot mm. more to James Madison than I, than I realised, I'll, I'll admit. We're not going to talk about Mick Dennis's col column that mentions uh, de our dear esteemed colleague uh, Rob Butler a couple of times. But it, it? It, yeah, it does. That. You have to read it. Oh, it's okay. on my football writer. Is Very it? interesting. Right. But um, there's a couple of points at, at the end where it basically says one Norwich fan, or maybe Rob said, um, James Madison shouldn't have gone out last season because it cost Alec Neal. The other saying, the loan did him a world of good. Mm. And I guess it's, it's either or isn't. It it's the same or. thing about Oliver. Was it right or wrong to have him on the bench when he comes oh, on and scores? I'll cut you off in your prime, Chris. <laughs> that was a good question as well. See you in a bit. <laughs>
have as, as many goals in in him as he as he did as he scored like last season in like League One. Um, I think that we're going to have to accept that uh, like with him. Grabben, I haven't seen uh, uh, like as much of, but he seems to be much more of a threat um, in front of like. Oh, I, I don't know if he's going to um, continue to play up front for the whole season. I think he may end up on the wing. Um, Grayson seems to want to, to get a, a, at least another one striker in, maybe two. Um, but he certainly he looks he looks uh, like th- he looks like this is his like level. Um, I'm I'm not really shocked to see him come back down to this tier, but um, yeah, I think that for you know where we are, I think I think that he, I think that he might do well. I really do. Yeah, well, I certainly we'll, hope that he will. Well, keep an eye on Lewis uh, here, most most definitely. Uh, we won't talk about the last time you came down to Carroll Road because that was a truly horrendous afternoon for Norwich City. And basically, I enjoyed it. I'm That's sure you did. I'm sure you did. But we're not talking about that. Um, <laughs> uh, we're not talking about that. Uh, just some really quick fire ones. Give us uh, a player that uh, Norwich City fans should watch out for uh, or be wary of for Sunderland. Uh, a McGeady, certainly. Um, even he's. He's not maybe what he was, but his feet are, are like still quick, and he holds on to the ball extremely well. And, and, and I think that he's the man who's going to be a, the biggest threat for us all season. I would say. Yeah, he was great last season too. Uh, a player you're hmm. worried about in Norwich's ranks? Well, I haven't really seen that much of them, but um, Hulahan's always been the one um, which sort of like uh, has. A concern me slightly. He's, he's always done well versus us. Yeah, absolutely. Finally, then, Michael, your prediction. Um, I don't think that a Sunderland will win. I think that um, that a Norwich have got an extremely good coach. I think they're going to be much more uh, like settled. Um, I'm, I, our record, other than the, 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 the like last time we were there, was it isn't isn't all that great. Um, but I will go for a, a one-one draw. Fair enough. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. No bother. Brilliant stuff. Uh, City's pre-match press conference is on Friday lunchtime, and I'll be there, so keep an eye on the Pinkins YouTube channel and Facebook page, as well as uh, pinkin.com for the top lines from Colney. Uh, and the Pinkin Match Day returns on Sunday evening at 7pm with all the reaction and analysis to Sunday's game. That's on Mustard and Pinkin and the Pinkin YouTube channel. As for the rest of the championship weekend, here's a surprise. Uh, it all starts at 3pm. There we go on Saturday. Uh, Ipswich get a nice game at Barnsley, while Birmingham and Brentford will be looking for their first points. Cardiff Villa looks tasty, while Wolves have another toughie. P&E head for Elland Road and Reading versus Fulham is a meeting of last season's failed playoff semi-finalists. Uh, Wednesday and Borough will both be expected to get off the mark on home turf before Sunday's big one. There we go. And Norwich, of course, play in midweek. I think there's a full uh, f- uh, set of fixtures in the championship in midweek. Norwich are playing on Wednesday night. No show, but we'll get onto that in a bit. Uh, in terms of Sunderland, they have been written off by a lot of people. And rightly so. I think they've, they've, they've crashed and burned from the Premier League. They've clung on with their fingernails for so many yes. years now. At and Norwich's co- expense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it has caught up with them. Um, you can see they're selling players left, right and centre to get them off the books uh, and not buying in that much quality to replace it. So I, I can't see them being any type of force in the, prem- in the, the championship this season. Paul and Graben? Yes. Has that Sunderland fan just thrown his shirt at his manager? Is that why he sat there in his vest? <laughs> it wasn't a vest, that was a, was a nice little boob tube. Was it? Yeah. 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 We never saw it, didn't we? Yeah. Honestly. Um, yeah, I think it, uh, th- this could be the, the, the great coming together of Lewis Graben and Nelson Oliveira on, on the pitch at the same time. You know, you, all, you think about the last few years with Norwich City, you know, Graben was the Oliveira of his day, wasn't he? They could, they can, they can hold hands and... So have together. discussions about getting sent off at Rotherham. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. together, what they? is it with Rotherham? It's those two. Yeah. Oh dear. Right, we've got 11s, and I think we've got Tom's first. 11. This is the 11 you'd pick, Tom, on yeah. Saturday, and then Sunday. I, I'm helpful. I'm, I, I, obviously, there are a few that I could change in and out. I'm, because it's so early in the season, I don't really have that much faith that this would be any better than anyone else's starting up. I just liked the. Uh, uh, the use of Yannick on the wing as a, as a wing back last week at Fulham, I thought he had a really good first half. I, obviously, they got a bit overrun in midfield, but I'm hopeful when it's when we're at home, and a, I don't think Sunderland are as good as Fulham. Even with Evo fit. Uh, well, yeah, I think I would. I'd, I, I mean, I, I thought he played really well on on a Saturday. I think he was un, unfortunate to be taken off, but I think he was sacrificed for the shape of the of the, of the team. But um. 
No who the hell at home either? Well, I mean, he could come in as well. I mean, so, they, they do have that sort of strength in, in backup, so I, I mean, there are a couple of them I would, could have swapped in. I just didn't really... Uh, I couldn't really pin it's best the best line-up. Really, yeah. Nelson and Jerome starting together as well. Yeah, that was a bit controversial as well. Yeah, Although, it would be. I mean, he should have scored a couple. He, he should have done. I mean, yeah. it's a great opportunity just to hit the target. And, Chris, do you have a look at your 11? Yeah, it's very similar. I have brought Pinto back in on the right because um, when you're talking about wing backs, you have to remember the back bit of that. Um, I, th <laughs> I thought Vilska, I thought he he was a unique player at Fulham. I thought he was managing to terrify both sets of defences because when he was going forward again... He did really well going forward, he, yeah, but, he did. But then it, it felt that Fulham w had realised that actually he's not used to playing in that position and I, I would rather have somebody who's a, who can do both jobs in that position. Um, I've gone for Madison and Houlihan together because I just thought that was irresistible the other night. But um, I, I do think we've got to remember Stephen Naismith is back and available mm. for the first time. And when we're talking about what a young team Norwich have got at the moment and a lot of new players, I do think his experience, his know-how could come in very handy this season. And, and from what I saw of him in pre-season, he looks as if he's well and truly bought into to Daniel Farkas. And I think so the manager he, likes him too. Yeah, he's he, really he, enjoying it. Yeah, I think he could be a... He's sort of a bit of a forgotten man having missed the first two games. Exactly, he's been suspended, hasn't he, for the first two games and, and the last game. We'll, we'll have to see. It'll be good to see him, I think. I said that. Ivo Pinto will make his 50th appearance for Norwich City if he plays on Sunday. Already? So there yeah. you go. No worries, I've, I've saved your job, Chris. Uh, right, uh, predictions time, I think we're left with. Oh, we'll have to go for a home win. Start off at home. I'm going to go for a... I don't think they'll score. I'm going to go for 2-0. Two 2-0 nil. Two nil Norwich win. Yeah. Well, they're not playing Jermaine Defoe this time, so that will help. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. Chris? I'll, I'll probably agree with that. I think I'm fairly confident with this one. I think Norwich is going to win at home. I have to say, uh, we did the uh, Pinken.com prediction league, didn't we, last year? And uh, at the th start of this season, I, I keep being in the tits of thinking, oh, I've got to do a prediction, and we're not doing it this year. So are you, oh, missing, really? are you missing the prediction that's, league? Um, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> always the way, yeah. Just trying to remember to do it. Is, yeah, I agree. It was always the one. Never won. It was always Pete. Pete Sport Day's Pete always won it. Tom, um, prediction? I will go home win. There's a little nagging voice in the back of my mind that Sunderland haven't won a league game in August for seven years. And Good stat. Wow. Wow. No wow. no <laughs> there always seems to be a time. Norwich always seems to be the team that come up against these sort of records when they fall. So, But despite that, in the back of my head, I still think Norwich will win on Sunday. I guess, I guess the thing is, Norwich kind of owe Sunderland one, don't they? Yes, yeah. big time. And by the same time, Sunderland have got a pretty ter Just terrible like record here. One, haven't they? So, yeah, yeah. Completely new, fresh team. No history between the two sides. Mm. Should be home with. And Norwich will leave, therefore, with the Friendship Trophy. We hope. Is that, is that exciting? Is that still a thing? It's quite uh, ironic when you've got Lewis Grabman coming back, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> will it fit in the cabinet at Carrow? Now, I think, um, have I got this right? Was it the Friendship Trophy that was once quite badly damaged and they need to find a new yes. one? Yes! Oh, gosh! Right? I hope they fixed it. Yeah, I don't know on that bombshell, yeah. that's it for tonight's <laughs> show. If you missed any of it, then fear not. You can watch it all again on the Pink and YouTube channel when the reception will probably be much better for the replay. And uh, that goes for all the build-up from Colney and Pink and Towers ahead of Sunday's game. But for now, a big thank you to my main man, Darren Ely, and our top guests, Chris Gorham and Tom Osborne, as well as producer Jake and all the team behind the scenes. Don't forget to listen to The Scrimmage on BBC Radio Norfolk tomorrow, live from 6pm. Uh, we'll be back live in a fortnight's time due to the Q PR game next week. So that is Wednesday, August the 23rd at 7 p.m. Live as always, feels ages ago. Until then, here's to the Black Cats being unlucky ones and Daniel Fucker getting all his ducks in a row. Good night.